Good morning, guys. I thought what better on a Sunday than to film a QA. and a I'm gonna be answering your guys' questions and doing like a little get ready with me in the process. In my bed, apartment tour coming soon. Putting thought into how I wanna decorate, but also keeping the space minimal. Anyway, we have a lot of questions on career, a lot of questions on fashion, and also about just the general apartment. To introduce myself, hi, I'm Issa, and I'm 23. I live in New York City. I am a full-time fashion content creator. I do lifestyle, I do beauty, and I get to make vlogs for fun. Into the first question, tips on getting into fashion and the space that you're in with a budget. Basically, when I started, it was my sophomore year of college, and I created a lot of like how-to tutorials of dressing like celebrities. When I started, I did like videos on TikTok of like how to recreate outfit trends, and I bought pieces that I had thrifted or had gotten like really, really cheap. Like I remember I used to buy on Shein, now I don't think it's as ethical but I understand like if people don't have the budget to buy sustainable clothing like your only option is fast fashion that's just the way fashion works like there's no such thing as eth ethical consumption under capitalism so I think the thing about getting into fashion it doesn't matter how much money you have it's about your personal style and how you channel it it took me i would say like a solid two three years to develop my own style it was one of my new year's resolutions last year to have personal style isn't that crazy it's a really random resolution but i just felt like i didn't want to be like everybody else in this space and wear the same things i just wanted to have like something that really represented me the key is to really just have like your own style and your own eye and to not look too much at others for inspiration fashion is just so much more than like buying something quick and wearing it for a trend it's the way you show yourself like there's a wearing versus styling trend styling is how you show like your personal identity in an outfit so it's not all about buying expensive things cheesy as it sounds thrifting ebay secondhand i've done a lot of ebay shopping i used to buy like ebay bundles and then just like pick things from the things i liked and then sell the rest so that i had key pieces at an affordable price but but then I used to just like recycle things out of my closet so I could try and experiment new pieces. And then for jewelry, I feel like jewelry, you don't really need to buy anything expensive. Like accessorizing is key. So long answer, but I hope that makes sense. Okay, where do you draw your style at the bow from? Yu Han Wang, Xu Xu Tang, San Yu Liang, all Asian designers. Just by chance, Kim Shui, literally all of them. eBay for sure. Shop Peach, Shop Peach is a go-to. Tay Park, yeah, literally. Also, I like seeing like other asian people in the space i think kind of cool is cute she that she's based in seoul and actually my friend told me about her because she's friends with her friend so it's more of like a i admire her as a friend and she's so cute i feel like jenny from blackpink super cute stuff on my explore like random things honestly like this this was on my explore taurus souvenirs is on my explore like this is on my explore like these aren't even accounts that like i necessarily follow i'm always on my explore just looking yeah taurus souvenirs so cute yeah i'm influenced what do you love the most about your life right now that's such a sweet question i love my support system the most my family and my friends without them <sighs> Just kidding. I think just knowing that they support me in what I do and they've known I've always been interested in anything related towards like food or fashion is encouraging because like they're always supporting me. And then my friends, like I have really bad imposter syndrome. I am always overthinking. My friends always guide me. Also, my therapist is awesome. He just listens to me ramble for an hour every other week. But yeah, and I love just like the fact that I'm 23 and I feel like I'm living and I'm only 23 once. I've loved everything that life has had to offer and I love my job and sometimes I feel like it is hard to like sit back and like think about how far you've come or just like what you're doing without comparing yourself so yeah I do really love life and I'm cherishing it I'm also in a happy relationship so yay do you ever get tired of your lifestyle and work this is kind of related to the previous question about like how much I love life but at the same time I guess there can be cons I feel like nothing to complain about like there are people 
people going through way worse in the world. Nobody should be complaining in this industry. Do I get tired? I get like emotionally drained, mentally exhausted in a way where just like if I have a social battery that's this big and then I'm like using it up to this much every day, it's basically at negative 3000. I can socialize with people that give me energy, but sometimes like it feels draining because if I hear other people complaining, I think that's a thing. Like sometimes I can be in this space and I hear other people always complaining or always comparing and then it will kind of affect me and make me think about whether or not I should be comparing or complaining so that can be tiring and then that's when I just come home and like reset and just spend time with loved ones because then I don't allow people access to complain and like draw negativity towards me you know speaking with a professional therapist has definitely helped me go into that speaking of therapy I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video if something is interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals and any sort of negative energy you can get that shit away with talking to a licensed therapist from better help they give you somebody who is trained to listen give you helpful advice that is unbiased and i understand that face-to-face -face therapy can be very uncomfortable that's why i do all my therapy online you can use better help with phone calls video sessions chatting or even messaging and there are literally over 30,000 therapists that you can be matched with so you take a questionnaire and then they match you with somebody and if you don't feel like they're the right fit no worries you just can keep trying somebody else you can schedule your therapy sessions whenever it's convenient for you which is also amazing if you don't like your therapist just switch because it doesn't cost you anything extra with your insurance so there's no additional stressors if you are spending too much time just overthinking just give therapy a chance over 4 million people have used better help and whether or not this is the first step for you or you're switching jobs you're moving places you're just in an in-between chapter in your life you guys can click the link in my description and schedule a session for yourself today you can get 10 percent off with the therapist to see if it helps you and yeah let's move on with the rest of the q a what mm. advice would you give to a girl that dreams of doing what you do i remember when i was 16 living in taiwan i had never thought that this would even be a possibility for me and i am so 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 thankful for you guys like you have no idea how thankful i am for any of your guys support and i feel like like advice for you guys like just find out what you're passionate about i think not everybody has to do fashion not everybody has to do beauty you can find something you're passionate about through other niches like in my management there are people who have this career but do personal consulting like they're engineers and they show what their life is like as a software engineer but also how they manage their time schedule and people want to see that like people like to see raw realness and if that's something you're passionate about you should totally make videos out of like your job you know my friend angela because she also works at YouTube and she kind of shows like her post-grad transition and she's made content about how she manages her time with a full-time job and like now she has you know the option to do content cre creating full-time but like she's still showing like the juggling of both sides and in my management there's like interior designers there are chefs there are families and even just like they're just prime examples of people kind of like not following like the conventional norm of content creating content creating creating i feel like is so broad now and there's always something that will work with you as long as like you really put a lot of time and effort into what you're passionate about so my advice is to just find out something that like you really love like if you really love fashion then go ahead like i think you should just keep creating videos these are all things that can cover grounds because there's somebody out there just like you you know so just know that people do want to see what you want to post and like really believe in yourself that's my advice. Mm -hmm. With friendships, how do you maintain female friendships and find a supportive group of girls? Oh. I met Allison through Instagram DMs and then a lot of my close friends are from high school. I would say when you're starting in your 20s, like I would say to just like DM people. My friends, everyone Haley, they met through Instagram and I met my friend Julie through Instagram. I feel like sliding into your DMs isn't just for people to flirt with, like for guys to flirt with you. Sliding in DMs is for you to say, hey, put yourself out there and make a friendship. And literally no shame if somebody doesn't reply. That shouldn't even be a worry, you know? This is like dating advice, but for friendship dating, follow them, follow you back, apply to their story, engage, start a conversation, see if they live in your area, and then form a friendship. Literally, that sounds easy, but at the same time, it's so, so easy. Like that's how I've met a lot of friends who've become close because of the fact that 
that we've gotten to know each other and we spent time hanging out. I've also seen people in New York do bumbled BFF dates, which seems really cute too. I've never done that before, but making friends in your 20s, you should literally slide in someone's DMs. Let's get ready though, because I want to get ready for the day. <laughs> What's it like adjusting to living with roommates to living alone? It seems scary and nerve wracking. Since it's already been a week, it's like already the fifth day of me living alone. I would say it feels extremely liberating because you can do whatever the f you want on your own schedule. I think the thing with me is that because I really care about my relationships in all aspects, friends, family, work, roommates, I am kind of like a sensitive woman in, the, in a way where like I'm always trying to read body language. And I think what's something that stressed me out with roommates from college or just in general is just that I never wanted to make anybody upset. I never wanted anyone to ever be mad at me. And if they were, I always felt like it could be my fault or that I I wasn't being a good roommate and I think the anxiety of not being a good roommate or being a good friend that makes you question not your self-worth but like your role in someone's life it's kind of like balancing how important are you to somebody versus how important are they to you and how do you not want to step on somebody's toes those are things that you don't have to consider when you love people because the dishes the organization of your place the kinds of things that you want to order to your apartment like my mess is all on me everything is on me I can do whatever I want with the fridge. I also don't have external factors in the way like somebody else's groceries taking up space in the fridge versus my own. I don't have people eating my food. Like these are just examples from like college or like from having roommates in general. How do you determine what to keep and what to get rid of? I think this is all about what you see your future self using. How does this product benefit you? Do you really need to keep a shirt that is five years old and feels like raggedy? You need to be giving yourself clothes that are clean, not stained. It's okay to buy new pajamas. Do I still wear pajamas with holes them yes because they're comfy how come i moved i just wanted my own space nothing deep how your working environment changes after moving alone i think because i don't plan on getting a tv i don't really watch tv actually so my work ethic won't really change but something that i've been really obsessed with is that i have a morning routine now and i've been waking up going to work out coming back making myself brunch getting a matcha every morning and also just like giving myself some like r and r time it's super important i would say that it makes you kind of like get on how you manage your time which is a really important part of adulting I'm actually obsessed with coming home. It's like a feeling that I haven't really gotten because I've tried to draw mood boards of like what I would want my future home to look like. And I would say I'm at that point because skincare, self-care, a healthy lifestyle is something that I've always wanted to ingrain. That's how you put yourself on your best foot forward every morning. I feel very lucky and grateful that I can be flexible, but also wear cute pajamas in my house, invite my friends for dinner. That was my three minute hair tutorial. Mm -hmm. College did you go to what did you study so i went to santa clara university and i studied communication and retail management that was the only school i applied to i also had merit aid and then after that i worked retail and then i also were at my dad's restaurant and i worked at vera wing i interned there because i wanted to be a wedding planner before but now I'm just a full-time content creator in New York. What are some things that you enjoy doing alone? Oh, I really like cooking alone because I think it's so therapeutic. At the same time when I'm cooking alone, I like to FaceTime people, but I think I just like to blast my music. I also do love to walk alone. I like walking around the block. I like being a little main character and going to a coffee shop. I love doing that alone. But I also love doing it with friends. Mm. Have you had your I made it moment? And if so, what was it? I don't know what would make me feel like I made it. The thing about setting goals is that once you set one and you reach it, you set more because you want more because you're always like striving to push yourself so i try not to be so hard on myself and i do have overarching goals but i think moving alone for the first time has made me feel very emotional because the first of all it's something that i was always scared to do but i think within graduating and how it's been a year of discovering myself and also just like going through this crazy apartment hunting process i'm like wow this is a space that is totally me and embodies my personality my personal style and I get to share it online. So I feel like I'm very content and I love life. <laughs>
I just got a package and I think it just delivered. I placed an order on Daiso. So I want to do a haul for you guys because I've been waiting so excitedly. I was complaining yesterday about how I didn't have Asian bowls to drink my soup because bowls that are made by Asian people have depth because you want to drink more soup and keep your broth hot. But then bowls that are for minestrone or chicken noodle is that you want it to cool down as you eat it because there's so much in the soup. But then for noodles, like you're eating noodles and you're drinking the broth broth so you need it to be like an even ratio it's not an even ratio of chicken noodle you know what i'm saying i'm so excited it's the little things in life what do you like about New York? Have you thought about moving to another city? I love how fast paced New York is. It's definitely a very hustle city because everyone kind of do something in their 20s. So I haven't thought about moving to another city unless I were to work in like a different field, but I like how young it is and it feels like the energy is like very high, very good for people in their 20s. Pros and cons with SF and NYC. SF is way cleaner, however, very residential. So live there when you're ready to settle down, which is what I plan to do. New York is very fast paced not good for dating but at the same time if you want to like speed date and meet a lot of people such a great city because there's always people coming in and out all over the world okay that's enough questions makeup is done how do you make big decisions I kid you not, I call like eight friends. Basically, I come to terms with what I want. This is what my heart wants, and this is what my brain thinks is right. I go to three of my closest friends for what do you think? I have option A or option B, or I present to them what I'm already thinking, and they either agree or they agree. <laughs> In the end, it's up to you. So when you let other people's opinions affect what you're thinking, it really messes up what your original feelings were, and it makes you like out of tune with yourself, you know? So when I make big decisions, it's really important for me to make sure I'm doing what I want that will not only benefit me, but just like make me grow as a person. What has been the hardest part about adulting in your 20s for you? The hardest part about adulting is setting time for yourself. I feel like especially since mental health isn't talked about a lot with Asian Americans. This might not be applicable to everybody, by the way. Generational trauma you see with your parents of like, just suck it up, deal with it, keep going, keep working hard. Like that can make you experience burnout. And I think like in your 20s, you have to really know how to like preserve your energy as cheesy as it sounds you have to figure out like who is adding to your life what is adding to your life and what in your routine is taking away from it you know when you're adulting people just don't have time to think about everybody else people just want to think about themselves you have to learn that everyone's busy you can't rely on other people and the best person that you can focus on is you makeup is done